holistic coach. We're talking about holistic coaching. We defined it up at the top, talking about the practice, breathing, taking away all the distractions and kind of getting at the spirit. Yes. And, and, and that it is a, a, a faithful religious experience. But how, mu how much practice does it take to do that? It's daily. You know, daily, but it only really takes less than 10 minutes. So the 478 I talked about earlier, um, it's suggested that you do it first thing in the morning and then you do it the last thing in the evening. And a 478, if you do four rounds of that, takes less than 10 minutes. So it's less than brushing your teeth. So it's just becoming a, a ritual, if you will, in your life. And then, then throughout the day, just realize that breath is within us so that when you're at a stoplight, instead of being frustrated or agitated in traffic, you can do some deep breathing. Or if you're in the grocery store, you know, take time just to exhale out. You know, one of the things I touched on earlier is biologically our breathing patterns become shallow. And to be able to reprogram our nervous system to help with lowering blood pressure is learning to elongate the breathing pattern. So that's one of the benefits of doing mindful breathing is to have deeper, longer, slower, and more evenly, bringing more air in and out of the body. And so it's a very powerful technique. But yes, you can start just slowly in the morning, in the evening, and then throughout the day. I encourage you today, or anybody that's watching, is to pay attention to your breath when you can. You know, when it pops in your mind, and then just exhale out. Because a lot of us, through times of stress and heightened anxiety, we hold our breath, and I do. I realized that when I went on this journey. And so throughout the day, I would just start exhaling out. And I was like, whoa, I really have a lot in me. And then when you can exhale out, you actually get more in. It's like a water pitcher full of water. When it's full, you can't put more in. But once you pour it out, then the vessel is open. And should you be thinking about you know, Bible verses? Or, or is this in some, is, it, is it prayer? Or is, is the breathing, it's really just a to wipe everything out of your mind, or it, it's a spiritual experience. Yes. I understand. Yes. But is it is it a prayer? Are you saying? Are you are you speaking to God, or are you are you interacting in that level, or are you trying to just wipe your mind clean of everything? It's a little bit of both. You know, meditation really is to let go of all the angst and the anxiety and the tame that the thoughts or the the tapes that go through our mind and then to be able to allow spirit, God, the higher power, speak to you. You know, if you have a question, if you're dealing with an issue, you know, you can go prayerfully, you know, into meditation, you know, and let the higher power and God speak to you. You know, sometimes I do use scripture. One of the things that I do is a lot of affirmation. So the four, seven, eight, once you get that rhythm, what I like to say is I am one with God. I breathe in life goodness and peace and I release all those things that concern me and so that's the four I'm one with God I breathe in life goodness and peace is the seven on the hold and on the exhale on the eight I release all those things that concern me so that's bringing an affirmation it's bringing in scripture but it's what brings you to your place of calm you know what brings me to my place of calm may be different from your place of calm but I do I bring in a lot of scripture it is about God and it is about finding answers, but your intuition and your inner knowing and tapping into that. And it's about taming your thoughts yes. and how difficult that is. Why do you think it is so difficult? I mean, just saying those words bring peace. Yes. And yet in this world, we just don't do that. Why, why, why is it that we have just missed out on that? This seems, again, so basic, but yes. no one, no one, we don't do it. Yes. And so we live in this kind of hectic, uncomfortable, stressed out condition. And why do, you, why do you think we have gotten to the point that we don't just reaffirm ourselves or spend a moment praying or, or you know, being in touch with, with God? I mean, wh what, what, why do you think that has happened? I think we've gotten so busy that we forget, you know, why we're here. We forget we're spiritual beings housed in a physical body. And when we can wake up each day understanding that, that we're spiritual beings on this earth and that God has given us gifts to give back to the world. And when we can tap into those gifts and give those out to the world, it's a very magical place, very different from being stressed out. And when we can understand those principles, we can ride the stress, the waves of life, you know, that emotional roller coaster 
a little bit more smoothly. You know, because we are going to have stress. We are going to have troubles. But when we're connected and we're spiritually connected and we can use these practices and force ourselves to make it part of our daily practice, then when things come to us, we're just a little bit more calm. We're just a little bit more less stressed, you know, because we're connected and we know we're grounded, that we're not here alone and that we do have help with us right now, right here in the studio, you know, with us at all times. But unless you believe or connect to that energy, then that energy is not gonna be so prevalent. It's like cause and effect. What you put out is what comes back. You know, what you focus on is what expands. So what do you focus on in your brain? Is it stress? Is it anxiety? Is it, oh, I'm not good at this or I'm stressed about that? Understanding that we, as an individual have the power to choose our thoughts and so we can allow that thought to come up fear um, and change it to faith because we have that power but just being able to use that and that's my goal is to teach that that yes we're aware we need to do all these things but do we do it and being able to teach people easy ways to be able to apply them to everyday life and then watch their life change and you mentioned earlier on about the humanistic approach. Yes. What is, um, how, how would you define that? The humanistic approach is simply this. What matters most is not what is, but is what is felt or perceived. Okay, so it's a feeling or a perception. So for example, let's say that you're a fabulous piano player, say 98% better than the rest of us, okay? But in your mind, you feel that you're not that good. That self-regard or that perception is really what matters most because life truly is the story that you tell yourself. And yeah, there are so many people that are focused on those things they don't have. Yes. Or the 2% of piano players that are better instead yes. of the 98% that they're better than. And and so we do have to sometimes re uh, calibrate, re what, whatever, recalculate what yes. it is that we are thinking. But that's hard to do. It is hard to do. It's reprogramming. But once we understand the concept that we can, you know, that's the first step. Awareness is the first step to transformation and change. So becoming aware that we have the power within us and it's a guided power and that we get to choose our thoughts. We get to choose what we put in our bodies. You know, we get to choose how we feel every day. Now, it's not easy, but it also becomes somewhat of a game. So when you can realize that, then you can play the game. For example, let's talk about fear and faith, right? Two things that are so prominent, you know, and a lot of times, to your example earlier, you may do 50 things fabulous and one thing wrong. What do we dwell on? We dwell on that one thing that we did wrong or not as good. So same thing with fear and faith. Where do you spend most of your time? Is it on the fear side or the faith side? And fear and faith is exact. It's believing so strongly in your heart that something's gonna happen in the future that you cannot see. And so we have 45 seconds left. Yes. Where could people get more information? I know you, you do corporate, you talk to corporate uh, yeah. groups, but wh where could people get more information? In the you can go ones? to um, JennySpeaks.com, that's G-I-N-N-Y Speaks.com, or you can call me at 615-650-5281. Jenny Speaks, thank you very much for educating us on this. Thank very you. interesting. Thank you for being here. Thank all of you for watching Issues of Faith. Have a great day, everybody.